That's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight. Losing my religion. Trying to keep up with you. And I don't know if I can do it. Oh no, I said too much. I haven't slept enough. I thought that I heard you snoring. I know that it's hard to breathe. It's why you wear a mask at night. And air was just a dream. Try, cry, why try? Air was just a dream. Just a dream, just a dream, dream. <laughs> what a great song. Losing My Religion by fantastic US band R.E.M. And today we're talking about R.E.M. Sleep. A unique and critical phase of sleep characterized by vivid dreams, and also a low muscle tone or atonia. During REM, your voluntary muscles, ones you can control consciously, like your limbs, your body, your neck, your throat, all those things you can move around, your fingers, they become almost paralyzed. Now, everything about sleep is a bit of a mystery, but researchers believe this atonia, this low muscle tone, might help prevent us from acting out our dreams, which is a plausible hypothesis. Whatever the reason, low muscle tone is terrible news for snoring and sleep apnea. I mean, your airway is already very narrow and restricted, so you can imagine what happens when those small muscles that support your neck, throat, and tongue hit that atonia brick wall. Disaster. Let me show you what this looks like on Sleep HQ. It's fascinating. So here we are over at Sleep HQ, and for those of you new to the channel, warm welcome. Sleep HQ is my free CPAP data analytics and reporting platform, and it's just a great little tool you can use to check out your CPAP therapy data, check out all the charts, and make some changes if you need to. And we're looking at David Fruderman's profile again. G'day, David. I've been using David's data quite a bit. He's uh, got great data. All right, now let's scroll down, and what I wanna show you is this. We've got the pressure here in green, and also the flow rate. So the pressure is the changing in David's therapy pressure levels throughout the night, and then the flow rate is his breathing. Now at first glance, I can see around four REM periods on this particular night, and I'll circle them right here. So I can see one right here. You can see the pressure shooting up here after about an hour and a half of sleep, which is about right, and then you've got another one here, See the pressure shooting back up again? And then you've got another one around here. And then the last one around this stage here. David also wears an O2 ring. And if we scroll down, we can also see David's blood oxygen levels. And we can see right here, they're quite stable. In this blue line here, quite stable. And then you can see them drop off down to 85 during REM. And they quite stable again. And then the second REM period, you can see them dropping down again, down to 85, third REM period here, and fourth REM period around here. The reason I wanted to show you this example, guys, is because you can clearly see the different therapy requirements for David in REM versus non-REM. During REM, he needs a lot more pressure because he's lost all that muscle tone and his oxygen levels are dropping. So more pressure is required to force air into his lungs to bring up those oxygen levels. If you want to reduce the impact REM sleep has on your snoring and sleep apnea, then try not to sleep on your back. And perhaps increase your sleeping angle just a little to minimize the effects of gravity. Until next time, guys, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon, bye.